Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. The Master and Margarita. By Mikhail Bulgakov. Mikhail Bulgakov, the author of the novel The Master and Margarita, had the concept for the narrative in the 1920s and continued working on it until his death. A second novel based on Pontius Pilatus's motivations was conceived in the mid-1920s, and after some fine-tuning, he incorporated it into this one. An epilogue concludes each of the two symmetrical books that make up this work. The first book has 18 chapters, the second has 14, and so on. Based on the idea of a novel within a novel or one text buried inside the other, with the use of the intertextual linkages normally found in literature, it offers some indicators that are unique to the era in which the author was born and lived. Because Bulgakov was influenced by both Gogol and Dostoevsky in terms of style and content, he borrows both Gogol's comedy and Dostoevsky in philosophical and religious impulses. The story takes place in both Moscow and Jerusalem. The master and Margarita lived in Moscow while the illusion was taking place in Jerusalem. When Woland and his crew transform the story's events into something strange and fantastical, things get even more convoluted. The occurrences are becoming irrational, switching between fiction and reality, and it is impossible to explain them. Even as it appears that reality is becoming increasingly fictitious, the opposite is also true. Time-place continuum follows this same pattern, balancing rational and irrational events by introducing the bizarre into our daily routines. Irony of Soviet literature and institutions, as well as the artist-government interaction are all explored in this novel's grotesque reflections on Soviet daily life. The action unfolds during a chance encounter between Mikhail Alexandrovich Berlioz, editor of an art magazine and president of Moscow's literary organization, and Ivan Nikolaevi Ponyrov, a.k.a. the Bezdomny. Black magic specialist is his claim, and he tells them a tale about Pontius Pilatus' debilitating migraines, his hatred of Jerusalem and the role he played in punishing Joshua Hanacher for his role in igniting an uprising to destroy the temple. Master's novel, which begins from Pilate's perspective, recounts a story about the final events of the Gospels before the resurrection. After Bezdemny's story concluded, a strange chain of events transpired, culminating in Berlioz's death by streetcar and Bestemny went insane. Nobody accepted his version of events, so he ended up being admitted to a psychiatric clinic and diagnosed with schizophrenia. It wasn't long until Professor Woland, the master of the dark arts, and his black cat Azazel showed up at the late Berlioz's apartment. Yalta, where most of Moscow's residents were taken, was a surprise to Berlioz's roommate Lihodiev. This happened during Woland's presentation of the Black Magic Act which was meant to expose the audience's hypocrisy and play with them. They quickly understood that Pontius Pilatus had put them both in the same cell, and that they had also met Woland. Only his nickname, the Master, was known about this mystery guy. The love of his life had sewed a M on his hat, which he proudly wore. Pontius Pilatus is the subject of his new book, he was previously a historian who worked in a museum. His wife encourages him to keep writing, and he expects to publish his work shortly. When the novel is not published because of ideological criticisms voiced by some reviewers, strange things start happening. He decides to destroy the manuscript since he is unable to bear the pressure, leaving his lover and ending up in an asylum. Finally, Bestumny was awakened from his coma by a dream depicting the master's next novel, in which the punishment had been executed. But Woland and his crew were still making noise all around Moscow. Margareta Nikolaevna first appears in the novel's second half, Master's Love. In her thirties, she is married to a respectable resident of Moscow. The character of Levi, who deceived Joshua, shares a lot of remorse with her because she left the master and betrayed him. After meeting Azazel, Margareta is given the opportunity to reconnect with the master. Woland had organized a Satan's ball, and in return, she would have to perform the role of the queen, so she quickly signed the contract with the devil himself. A series of bizarre incidents occurred following the ball allowing Margarita to meet with the master once again. They met in the chamber in the basement where master used to write his novels and other works of fiction. Margareta was able to peruse master's journals before he fell asleep. As for Pontius, the novel ended with him seeking to atone for his past transgressions by ordering Kirill to murder Jude and developing a romantic relationship with Levi Matthias. At that time, Moscow was on edge because Woland and his gang had chosen the fate of the master and Margarita. They planned a trip to heaven for them both, along with a guarantee of perpetual bliss. When Woland and his team depart Moscow at the end of the book, everything returns to normal. The Master
The protagonist of the story is a would-be author who has aspirations of authoring a bestseller. Joshua Hanachera and Pontius Pilatus were the subjects of the novel. In the face of the scrutiny of his colleagues and critics, he couldn't bear it. We never learn his real name, all we have is the moniker Margarita, his great love, bestows on him, which he considers unworthy. He had great potential, but he couldn't handle the pressure of success. The events surrounding Pilatus and Jeshua were described from his perspective in his writings. Margarita. A stunning woman in her thirties, she is the wife of a prominent Moscow citizen. Even though she has a lavish lifestyle, she is dissatisfied with her marriage and lives a dreary existence. When she first saw the master, she fell in love with him and supported him throughout his work, knowing that he had great promise. Despite the master's burning of the manuscript, she was able to save a few chapters and even formed a contract with Satan as a way of regaining her love. For the sake of preserving the one she loves, no sacrifice was too great. On May 15, 1891, Russian writer Mikhail Afanasyevich Bulgakov was born in Kiev, Ukraine's capital city. In the Theological Academy, his father was an assistant professor. His family consisted of seven members. When he was a child, he was enthralled by the stage. His family performed his comedies, which he wrote. When Bulgakov finished high school in 1909, he went to Kiev University's medical school and graduated in 1916. At the time, he worked at the military hospital in Kiev. In 1913, he went to Tatyana Lapa. After graduating from medical school, he and Tatyana moved to a provincial community where he worked as a doctor. He served in the Red Cross Medical Corps as a volunteer doctor during World War I. He was twice injured in the front. Due to his continuous pain, he was prescribed morphine to which he quickly developed a dependence. In 1918, he was cured of his morphine addiction and never again used it. In 1926, he authored a book on that period of his life, and he was released. Both Notes on Cuffs and Notes of a Young Country Doctor are memoirs of his time as a doctor. After the First World War ended in 1918, Bulgakov returned to Kiev. The Russian Civil War had just begun at that point. A private practice was established in Kiev. The Ukrainian People's Army called him up as a doctor in February of the following year. He grew gravely unwell during this time period. Typhoid fever claimed his life. He was working as a journalist in the Northern Caucasus at the time of this writing. While the majority of his relatives still reside in Russia, he has never left the country. The Master and Margarita is a classic of the 20th century, as are The Heart of a Dog, The Fatal Egg, The White Guard, Great Soviet Short Stories, and A Dead Man's Memoir. He passes away on March 10, 1940, in Moscow. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.